Welcome to the third video in this series. This is going to be on the wall framing for our 600 square foot house. And since we have two by six exterior walls, we are going to have some six by headers. Each one of the headers will be on the building plans. And that should be in the structural engineering section. Sometimes it's in the roof framing section, which is where I believe this one is. And since these plans are meant to be used for homes in Southern California, we will need a four foot minimum break lap in the wall framing. If you're working in other states, then you might not need that. You might be able to get away with two by four walls and four by four headers or four by six headers here in your two by four walls. Make a note of the anchor bolt placement. We have placed the anchor bolts to miss all of the wall framing studs. And again, we have a plate break here that is more than four foot long. And again, two by six walls. And we are going to be putting shear panel on here. You will need to make sure that the distance from here to here, wherever the stud stops, will be four foot so that you can use a four foot piece of shear panel. And our interior walls are going to be two by four, except for the plumbing wall, two by four here, two by four here. And I did not extend this plate through because I would have had a difficult time with this plate break. So we're just simply going to strap this to make the connection there. Go into our bathroom window here. This is going to be centered in between this wall and this wall or the face of this wall and the face of this wall. And we do have a plate break down here. You're going to need an anchor bolt within 12 inches of the plate break. And let's go ahead and move on here. Our washer and dryer room, stackable washer and dryer. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we don't have any special layout for the shear walls with our anchor bolts, which tells me there's not going to be a lot of lateral shear force required by the structural engineer. And make a note of the window here, the face of the trimmer to right here is going to be four foot. And since we do have a piece of shear panel here, you're going to need to fur out the walls. And if you don't know what that is, let me know. I will show you in the next video. And here we have our backing for our short wall here. And then another window. Another view of that over there. The short wall here with the backing and our steel post. And again, this might not be required if your cabinets are going to be strong enough to support that wall and prevent it from moving sideways. A view of the interior corner there. Windows. And I'm just going to kind of work my way around here. We have our washer and dryer area here. And it looks like the two by six walls are going to work out great for our plumbing. Going to give us a nice wide wall here. And of course our shower backing. If you're going to have a tub or a shower, you're going to need some backing here most of the time. And you'll probably need some towel bar backing over here. You might need some additional backing for any ADA requirements. And a view of the centered window in the bathroom. And this would be a good spot for some towel bar backing. And then our door, and I believe the door width might be a little wider when building something like this in the future. I think that's a 2-8 door, and I think they changed it to a 3-foot door. But you would need to check with your local building codes to verify any of the information in this video, especially if you're going to build this particular house. Another view of the front wall there, side wall here. And then, of course, our bedroom does not have a door on it, suggesting that this house is going to be built for either a couple or an individual or people who don't mind listening to someone else snoring. Our closet backing on both sides there. Another view of the wall here. Next up, let's go ahead and pan out and then get a view from the top here. So we're going to have a bedroom, living room, dining room, kitchen, washer and dryer, bathroom. And next up, let's go ahead and put our shear panel on. And the measurements for the shear panel along with the nailing are on the building plans. And one of those types of shear panel will be 7 16 Now it is not calling out for structural rated shear panel. And it is requiring a 6 and 12 nailing pattern with 8D nails. That would be 6 inches around the perimeter of the shear panel and 12 inches in the field or on the interior studs. 
And here's a good example of where the shear panel will need a stud over here and a stud over here. And I went ahead and made these full length trimmers here because of the shear panel. But I don't know if that's something you would need to do. And you can see here where we have the stud here. And of course this brake would need to come over to here. So make sure you don't do this right here. And of course feel free to point out any mistakes you find in the video. Because I believe last year I made two mistakes in my videos. Or was that 2000? I forget. And in this example here, you can see where the shear panel doesn't go over here. If you want this to be a nice corner, make sure that you compensate for it either over here or over here by moving the wall framing stud back a little bit. And hope that makes sense. Another view there. Go ahead and go to the front side and the back. And before I end the video, I just want to point out that you can see where I lowered this a little bit. That's because our standard wall framing stud usually produces an eight foot, one inch tall wall, suggesting that you're going to need to lower this a half inch and raise it up a half inch at the bottom. And for 6 and 12 nailing, that shouldn't be a problem. Something like this should work just fine. And it is actually a standard construction practice. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.